This lesson I'm going to talk about bundleweb. So I'll show you how the bundleweb works. Just work with one piece at a time, I sent you two. So your best bet to start off with is if your fabric is really creased like this bit is. Set your iron, think about what fabric you're using. So this is a polyester, so I don't want it to be too hot. So I'm going to set my iron halfway. Okay. Test it on the side first, or if you've got a scrap bit, just to see if it is the right temperature. It's still a little bit hot actually, so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit more. Okay, don't obviously hold it on there for in the same place for too long either. And then iron it out like that. Now, you might not have scrap pieces of fabric like this at home if you have a great, but if you haven't, you could possibly use an old t shirt. So you could cut down and use a section of the t shirt and put the bundle up on. Even an old set of pants, that's quite nice fabric, it's quite funky. You could cut that down into a shape. You don't need to use all of your bond web on one thing. You can cut it down into the sizes that you think you might need for your design. So I get my bond web. The side that's got the, the webbing on, that needs to go down onto the fabric. I'm going to put it up to the corner here. Not right on the edge so that it goes onto my towel, because otherwise it will stick to my towel. Now you can see when it's adhered itself to the fabric, to the fibres of the fabric, because it goes a lot darker, peel back the top layer, the paper layer. Not all the way off, just pull it back enough to how big you think your design is going to be. So you can you see, you can see the sheen of the glue on there. I'm literally going to trace off the parts of the design that I want to create. So I'm just going to start with a leaf. So you see, that's going to be the front of my fabric. This is pretty much like tracing paper, isn't it? So I can put this, so I don't waste any of my bundle web. I'm going to put it up right up to the edge. And okay, maybe take it up to there. Okay, then I'm going to get a pencil. And I'm going to take off the edge. Okay, I only need the outside edge for now. Okay, so if it moves a little bit, just line it up before you start the outside line again. Another way you can go about putting your design on the back of the bundle web is you can just use one of your templates that you might have saved already. So you could just hold it down with a little bit of masking tape and then you could draw on the outside. So this was from when I did the styrofoam printing. So then you could just draw around the outside and cut it out. Tracing off onto the bundle webbed paper is the best alternative if you're going to be taking it from a design that you've got in your book already because then you know that the pieces are going to fit together. Right, I now need another leaf so I can build up the tone. Um, I could just draw around this onto there or I can do the same as I did before and draw that on there. before cutting it out I'm going to iron it back down again but I'm going to leave that point I'm not going to iron that bit down because it'll make it nice and easy for me to peel it off again now I've got my leaf with my highlights I'm going to cut out these different sections here you can cut these okay you need a cutting mat as well ideally or a piece of wood and do it straight on the table because you won't be popular so you can just use the blade to cut along your lines like that and I would keep these lines because they might be quite interesting to add on the top of another leaf okay so you these particular highlights or they can be low lights on the next one you could put onto another leaf All right, so that's the easiest way to do it with a knife but if you haven't got a knife then you're going to need to find which of us your straightest line this is if you want to keep the middle. If you don't want to keep the middle, it doesn't matter too much. You could just fold it and make a clip in there like that and then cut it out, preferably with a smaller set of scissors, like your nail, nail scissors, or if you bought yourself a little pair of thread scissors, you can use those. But if you want to keep that shape so that you can use it on another design, then you're going to need to cut along a line like that, like a straighter line. Like that. And then get preferably your smaller scissors in there. 
showing a lot of that. Turn it around. Oh, you lay down there. So you probably saw how much quicker it was to use the scalpel blade. But if you haven't got a scalpel blade, then this is your next best bet. So yeah, keep all your little bits because they're interesting. They can you might find that the thing you build up with that is actually better than the first thing that you try to create. It's all about experimenting so that when you come to do your final design, you have more of an idea of what's working for you, what you enjoy doing the most. So let's see what it looks like if you put another colour underneath that. So you might want to get a brighter lighter green or a yellow or something and put it over the top it's quite nice when it doesn't completely marry up so that's quite nice don't waste these pieces these pieces here you could use either on the same green to build up the darker tone so you see how i put that on there and it's applied it's made it deeper okay so it'll give your work more form you could peel the backing as well for that and iron those down put those on there like that sort of thing And another thing you can do is you can use your lighter colour again, so in this case the lighter green, and you can put those dark highlights onto here. So they make them look a bit more like the veins coming down the leaves. Just a bit fiddly. Just give a little play, see what looks good, see where you like it. When you're presenting in your book, it's good to show lots of different options. So you could show one on a red background, one on the pattern background or the black background. So as I produce two of these, which are similar, similar colours that I've used or the same colours I've used, but in a different way, it might be quite nice to show one on the pattern background and then one on the red in my book. So just in case I want to use some more of this, and it's just because it's a sample for my book, I'm going to put it over in this corner here. So the first thing you need to do is peel off the paper backing, like that. place it where you want it, move these little bits out of the way otherwise you'll end up ironing them down before you want them ironed down. Next step is to iron my veins down, so I need to make sure I get the right side down. I don't want to iron the bond web on the wrong side otherwise it'll just go on the bottom of the iron. Another reason why use the greaseproof paper because if you have got it the wrong way up it's only going to get stuck to the greaseproof paper and not the iron plus you should be able to peel it off again without losing your glue so pop these down where you want them I'm going to stick greaseproof paper on the top and just iron it down like that Think about your background for your book. You still want it to look half decent, so you could use a set square. Okay, make sure that it fits nicely within your work. Saving enough in case you want to use some of this red again. And then just mark with a soft pencil on the edge. So that when you cut this out, you present you like frame it, it looks half decent. Right, there, I think it needs to be. Okay, if you've not got a set square, obviously just use a ruler. Then when you're happy where you've placed it, you can put your greaseproof down again, or thin paper, or fabric, and iron it in place. Now I'm going to show you how you could produce something a little bit more dynamic. Using the bond web, I created a symmetrical pattern, so you can see where I've cut out all of these individual pieces. Some of them are layered up once, some are layered up several times, some of them I've used slightly thicker fabric. But going back to the leaf idea, so this is similar to the leaf that we produced initially, or I produced initially, like that. To make it look more 3D and more dynamic, I've actually couched underneath here before I put on my fabric. So I'm going to show you how I went about doing that. So I started by marking with a soft pencil the veins where I wanted them. The reason I've put an underlayer 
that I've drawn my veins onto is so that I can couch on this string that I've used without it puckering up. It just gives me a firmer surface to work on. So if you're already working on a thickish surface, you definitely don't need to waste fabric by putting another layer underneath. So I use string up to the vein that you've created, or veins, okay, and then cut it to the length that you think you need. When you cut it, cut it at an angle because then you won't have a solid end. You want it to taper slightly at the end. Okay, and then just sort of place it where you want it. If you did it on a machine, you would use zigzag stitch. So come towards the end. When you couch, you want to be pretty close to either side. You don't want to come out a lot further than the width of whatever it is that you're couching on because it will the piece will move around. So you want to keep it together. You can even use your needle to push it to the side and look at where your last hole was and pretty much put it next to that, like that. Okay, so pull that tight together. You don't want to couch on with anything too thick because that's going to show in your fabric as well. So use, I'd be just using a single thread. So you come up behind the string into your line and then just rotate the needle about a centimetre up. Pull the thread to the other side. Go behind the thread, behind the string, sorry. Pull it up into the next part of your line where you want your vein to be. Pull it, pull it back round again. Okay, so I'm going pretty close each time to the last stitch that I made. You can see that. And pull it tight again. And just tie off at the back of your work. So that's going to be the back of your last stitch before the loop disappears. So you need to pull your work. Pull it to the top. Cut it off. Something else to consider when you're couching string on or wool on. Don't want to have this too close together because you won't be able to get the iron push the iron down in between and create your highlights and lowlights, your troughs and your peaks. So use a couple of pins in the side just to keep your work where you want it and then start from the centre. The reason you want to start from the centre when you start ironing is because you've created these peaks and troughs. If you start from the outside first, you might not have left just you might not have enough fabric to pull in to these peaks and troughs without really destroying the outside fabric. So use the nib of your iron and use your grease proof paper to push down the centre first. Once you've held your centre in place you can then take your pins out the side and then you can work down. You can first of all make sure that this, this centre piece is held in place properly. So just use the nib of the iron to work your way down the edge of that string, like that. Okay, then get on this one. So I'm literally just using the nib of that iron. So once you've run the iron all the way down the centre, got that smooth, and then down the side of your centre veins, like that, you can then start to work your way further out towards the edge. So I'm just using the nib of my iron, just that rounded nib. Watch your fingers on the iron. Okay, you can see. So I'm not pushing too hard until I've got it where I want it. See, like that there wants to create a bit of a fold. So before it goes down, push it flat this side, like that. And then come back into the other side. There's a few ideas to get you started with the Bonderweb and using it for your 4 and 4 project.